Uh, hello, my name is Luke Paltzer. I'm Edward Rosenthal. And uh, this is our team. Um, there was some formatting issues, uh, but hopefully the slides look better on your end. Um, so we're not going to have a live demonstration, unfortunately, but when we interact with the robot, we will follow these safety procedures. We want to make sure that everybody is standing a safe distance away from the robot uh, and whenever possible have the standby engaged. And so what the standby switch does is it disengages the motors and the motor drivers from the batteries, um, uh, separating them, uh, which allows us to interact with the software and test things out uh, in a safe manner without the risk of um, kind of a motor going crazy and potentially hurting somebody. Uh, we also want to mark pinch points with um, some reflective caution tape. Uh, this way you can kind of be a little bit more aware of what's happening and uh, potential um, hazards to yourself and others. And finally, we're going to uh, uh, nov nominate a safety monitor whose job is to monitor the robot and people interacting with the robot. His job is to make sure that people stand the right distance away from the active robot um, his job is to press the emergency stop if, ne if necessary. Um, he's just uh, the overall safety guy who kind of makes sure that no one uh, hurts themselves whenever possible. Um, uh, so this is just an overview of the, the slide presentation we're going to give. Um, so where do we start? Um, over the past three years we've slowly been improving. Um, so we went from 13th to 10th place. Um, we're trying to gradually improve every year, make sure we get a little bit better whenever we can. Um, there's always more things to learn and kind of up to go. Um, problems that we've had in the past. Uh, so we have yet to achieve a qualifying mining run with the current uh, iteration of the robot. Um, and so we've gradually been improving it and upgrading uh, pieces when necessary to achieve that qualifying run. Uh, we have also not been uh, successful in completing uh, autonomous software. Uh, we've been making gradual steps and putting things in place so that uh, the software team can begin testing earlier and kind of more in parallel with the mechanical and electrical sides of the project. Uh, we were also uh, unable to kind of test everything sufficiently given the time constraints that we have. Um, it's just unfortunate and uh, we're, we're trying to use systems engineering to kind of tighten up the time tolerances, but we want to make sure that at every step of the process um, we are uh, still in line with the vision and the mission critical items uh, and that can sometimes slow things down, but it makes sure that the end result is something that we're really proud of and we'll do what we think it does. Um, so objectives, um, we want to verify the feasibility of the new design for the excavation system, uh, kind of upgrade things and make sure that they work. Um, we have yet to uh, verify this design in terms of qualifying and so being able to see that happen would be um, ideal. Uh, we also want to re re review mechanical uh, design changes. This is just uh, small upgrades uh, that were made throughout the robot, make sure that they were done right and that they were done with the, the mission objectives in mind. We also want to improve modularity. Uh, so this means uh, being able to remove uh, parts of the robot, upgrade them, uh, fix them or enhance them, and then return them to the robot in a relatively easy manner. Uh, and finally, uh, minimize dust infiltration. We've had a lot of problems with dust in infiltration in the past. Last year we collected about uh, seven or eight kilograms of regolith throughout the course of the competition and I think we brought, a we brought back with us uh, to Illinois about five kilograms of regolith just in nooks and crannies of the robot. And so being able to tighten up all the different uh, boxes and places for dust to hide would be uh, great. Um, so now we're going to move on to the design philosophy and kind of the process that we follow to design a robot. 
Uh, first and foremost, we want to keep it simple. We are a two-year school, uh, and as such, we don't have access to a lot of upper-level uh, classmen, and uh, we also don't have access to a lot of intricate fabrication uh, facilities or uh, design software. And so being able to keep things simple and manageable throughout the course of a semester is a huge goal for this project and something we really want to focus on. Um, uh, in line with that, we want to work with what we have, not with what we want. Uh, there's a lot of things that we could do with uh, fancier machinery and nicer tools, but we don't have access to them. And so keeping that in mind throughout the design process and throughout working with everybody is really kind of important to making sure that the end result is the best that it can be. And again, along, along the lines of that is systems engineering, making sure that we follow each, each step of the process and kind of check ourselves, following, setting up review gates and then following through on them. Making sure that uh, throughout every step of the uh, design and production cycle we have um, a check that makes sure what we've done is still in line with the mission objective and that what we're going to do next is the best way we could get that done and achieve our goals. Um, and from what we found, systems engineering is the, the best way to do that. Um, so now we're going to talk a little bit about trade studies. So a new implementation for uh, the 2019 run was the shovel. Uh, we saw issues, as Luke mentioned, the initial second run from uh, 2018, we only got up to, I believe it was 0.8 kilograms of icy regolith. So uh, what we believe to do to fix this issue would be to expand the shovel length. And by doing that, we could actually reach down to what we calculated to be about 18 inches or right between the 10, uh, 30 to 60 centimeter mark for icy regolith. So what we would theorize would be like the gold zone of these rocks to collect. Um, one issue that got in the way of last year was what we'll speak on later, but basically the new shovel would be more rigi rigid, uh, structurally in intact, uh, as well as longer. So the depth uh, capacity would be much greater. Uh, so, uh, additionally, we wanted to add uh, an oscillator to the shovel. Um, uh, we found through the course of previous competitions that the regolith likes to really clump together and can be kind of hard to move. And so having an oscillator affixed to the back of the, uh, the shovel is important for uh, both the, the digging cycle and the dumping cycle. Uh, we want to make sure that we can kind of jostle the regolith out of place and get everything into the scoop and then make sure that it th that, that regolith then falls out of the scoop as quickly as possible into the collection hopper. Um, we have also um, changed batteries. Um, the main motivation for this was that the manufacturer that we went to for our batteries for the last five years or so um, went out of business or we couldn't get a hold of them. Uh, and so we've, we've moved to a new manufacturer and as such, we wanted to make sure that the new batteries were as good as the old batteries and that there would be no negative drawbacks to using them uh, to go forward. Uh, so the system hierarchy and, and product that we've given, uh, this is just kind of a general breakdown of uh, each component and their subcomponents and um, all the assemblies, kind of all the, the bits and pieces that go together to make uh, GERTY2. Um, now going into like kind of the risks and, and changes. Um, so we use this uh, chart to uh, assess risk. So the, uh, the rows are probability and the columns are consequences. So it's how likely is something to happen and if it were to happen, how dangerous is it? And the, uh, the angled line uh, kind of separates the the upper right from being very dangerous and very probable, and the bottom left being very improbable and uh, not that catastrophic. Uh, a couple of the key uh, risks that we identified were uh, communication and uh, navigation stall. 
So uh, these are both things that have happened to us in the past where we've stalled during navigation or a uh, communication failure has occurred with a separation of a dongle or other components that have led to the immediate mission failure. And so we want to avoid that uh, as aggressively as possible. Um, so these are just some of the improvements that we've made. Uh, we've reduced bandwidth, improved the shovel design. Uh, we've added a sifting mechanism to the hopper to kind of sift out the icy regolith from the regolith so that we don't carry unnecessary weight with us throughout the competition run. Uh, we also added an oscillator to the shovel and we've increased the modularity of the electrical box, making it easier to remove and um, troubleshoot while other teams still want to interact with the robot. Um, now going on to just general project management. Um, this is our kind of project man management critical path. Um, so this shows all the different reviews and kind of the steps that we take between reviews. Um, I found this to be very helpful when uh, organizing what needs to be done and really what we're trying to check at each step of the competition. Um, uh, so this is the Gantt chart uh, initially and um, next you'll see finally. Um, just some key notes is that uh, the critical design review took uh, dramatically longer than we had initially anticipated and that kind of scrunched everything else up. Uh, for the competition, which was uh, definitely not ideal. Um, uh, this is something that we found very interesting, uh, realized versus projected uh, project hours. So uh, at the start of this project, uh, every member is required to uh, dedicate uh, about 30 hours over the course of a semester to this project. Uh, and as you can see, the actualized numbers are significantly higher than that. Uh, and these would be self-estimated, uh, and I believe they would actually be higher than this uh, if we were to record them. Uh, a lot of our team members spend a lot of time on this project, and it's, it's very important. So we want to make sure that we get the most out of that time. And so really kind of understanding how much time this project demands from its members is important for making sure that people coming into the project are aware of what they're getting into and kind of uh, what they can look forward to. Um, so this is just some budget information. Um, we were mostly under budget. Um, the uh, travel budget is mostly estimated uh, uh, since it's, it hasn't been finalized yet. The, the trip isn't over. But uh, we've done a pretty good job and there's only a little bit extra in the, the budget which we will use for uh, parts and other stuff after the competition. Uh, and so just some final notes. We want to make sure, um, again, we will not be able to demonstrate the features of Gertie 2. Uh, when we, we did these slides, we had anticipated um, being in person. And unfortunately, we are at the competition right now in Alabama. And so the robot is kind of indisposed and isn't kind of able to be uh, hoisted in front of us and kind of displayed. So hopefully the presentation went well for you and for me. Thanks for your time.